Okay, I need to update this code that has no tests. And as Michael Feather says, code without tests is legacy code. So the question is, how can I change this code that has no test that I'm not familiar with and that was not architected for testing? How can I do that without struggling too much? And in this video, we'll see a technique to quickly test our code, creating a safety net that will allow us to confidently change the source code. So let's take a look. So I got this code online. Honestly, it's the first time that I'm reading it. And the only thing that I know is that it, it is supposed to convert a given list of objects to a CSV. I don't even know how it is implemented. However, I need to protect myself because I want to change it. I want to introduce a new feature on it. And as you can see, there's no test project here, okay? Only the final source code. And I am not brave enough to change this thing without tests. So what can we do here? There's a strategy named approval testing that unfortunately has multiple names. You will know it either by approval testing, characterization testing, or even snapshot testing. It's kind of the same thing. And this is an amazing technique to test legacy code. Why? Because it allows you to confirm that nothing has changed. And that is exactly what we are looking for, because we want to change the code of our system without impacting the existing behaviors. So it's a line of defense against change. We basically want our code to keep doing exactly what it does nowadays, even bugs. Why? Otherwise, we might broke a downstream dependency that is expecting a given bug that happens. So let's try to apply approval testing here to see if we can refactor our code safely. To apply approval testing, the first thing that we need is obviously a test project. So let's do that. Add new project give it a name, and I will use XUnit. Now that I have my project, what I need to do is to have a way to do that type of approval testing, characterization testing, snapshot testing, whatever you want to call it. There's multiple libraries that will help you to achieve that. However, there's one that I really like that I will show you. And that library is Verify. Verify is presented as a snapshot tool. However, it achieves the same goals as approval testing as I told you. And we will use it to implement the safety net that will make me comfortable to change that source code. By the way, as always, make sure you leave a star on the repository. And not only that, but if you want to give a try with Verify, make sure you come to the project and by the end on the README, you will find some other packages that are available. You can see the number of extensions that it has, okay? This is a good proof of the popularity of this library. And for example, if you are doing something with, let's say, Blazor, you have a package here. If you want to verify HTML, you have packages here. If you want to do it with images, you have packages here. On this case, I will just use the base version of Verify. So let's start. First thing that we need to do, obviously, let's install the Nougat package. There's many of them, but I will use the XUnit version since my project is using XUnit. And first, let's write the test using Verify and then I will explain you what Verify is doing. So the first thing that we need to do is to add an attribute to the test class. Let's do it. Is this one it uses Verify. And now let's just rename the test class. This doesn't make sense. Let's call it Converter Approval Tests. On my experience, naming the first tests on approval testing is quite hard because you, you are exploring. You don't know a lot about that source code yet. So what I will do on this case is that since I know that this should convert the list into a CSV, I will just say something like should export a CSV or should return CSV, something like that. And if I try to use that library, I need to do something like this. I will define a variable with the new CSV converter. However, as you can see, I need to define here a type. So I need to define the type of the thing that will be parsed. So let's create a class. Let's say we want to export employees. So an employee will have an ID, a name, and a birth date. And the CSV converter needs a separator and a daytime format. However, they are optional, so let's use the default values. And now I can act on it. So the CSV converter has a method convert to CSV, and it needs a list of data of the type employee. So let's build that list on our arrange step. 
Okay, we have our data and let's send it to the method and we need to capture the output somewhere. And since the method returns a stream, let's add it to a stream variable. Currently, this is our arrange step and this is our hacked. How do we check the result of this thing that we don't even know how it works? So on our assert, or we can also call it verify, so arrange act verify, kind of that. What we'll be doing is to use the verify library to check the output of that method. So let's use it. We call verify and we provide the stream and there's one extra change that we need to do. We need to return the output of this verify. To do it, we can do it since the method is a void. So what we need to do is to return the task. Okay, it looks good to me. So now let's run this test. So our test failed, but is expected. Why? The way that the verify works and often any library regarding approval testing will do kind of the same thing, is that the first time that you execute, it will look for an output file to compare the result with. If we are running this thing for the first time and that file doesn't exist, we need to create it. So you will see inside of the project where we have our tests, that there we have this file, converter approval tests dot should return a CSV dot receive. So this file is for exactly that test. And the dot received is basically the output that we got from running the test. If we go to our test window, you will see that you have the dot received and there's also a dot verifier. So he's trying to compare the receive that is the output of the execution with the verifier, but it, he can't find a verifier there. So what we can do is as simple as doing the following. We go to the receive, we can see the output. So this is the output of that execution. And we go there and we will rename the file to dot verify instead of dot receive. Basically what I'm saying is that this is the expected output. Now, when I run the test, I have a green. So if I go to the code and I change something like, for example, the default separator, what I expect is that once I run the test once again, we have an error. Why? Because they don't match the verify it and the receive that. So I know for a fact that I did something to the source code that has broken the existing behavior. And that is exactly what we are looking for. Does that mean that now I can start changing the code? No. Why? Because likely, currently, I don't have enough coverage with this just one test to feel confident to keep moving forward. What you can do before moving on to refactoring the code to introduce a new feature is to run any tool of test coverage, at least to have a sense if your existing approval tests are going through most of your code. Usually that will mean that you will need to play with multiple inputs arguments. So on this case, I already have a decent coverage, okay, with just one test because the code under test is quite simple. However, you can always use that tool to go there and understand which lines are being covered by that test, which are not, and then you can add new tests to feel more confident. On this case, as you can see, the lines that are not covered are regarding properties of the type date time. So what I can do to simply achieve the 100% coverage is to add another test or going here and let's add a new property of the type date time and let's add it to the test data. And now that I have it, let's run the tests again. Obviously those tests will fail. Why? Because they don't match the verified. So I update my verified expectation, run the tests again, and I have a green once again. And if we see our coverage, now you can see that I achieved the 100%. What does that mean? Is that now I can feel more confident going in, refactoring that source code, introducing some changes, because I know that the existing behavior is at least being tested somehow. So I know that if I provide a given set of inputs, I will always get the exactly same output. So now with this 100% coverage, I can feel more confident going in into the source code, changing some things, refactoring, okay? I have something that is asserting that with a given set of inputs, I always have the same picture of the output. If I didn't achieve the 100%, just bring some more tests with more input data, play with the arguments, okay? Until the moment that you have a coverage that give you the confidence to start changing things.
approval testing might be useful to other things other than writing tests against the system that you don't know that well. You can use it, for example, to things like testing a report generation, testing a graphical user interface. But does it replace example-based testing? I don't think so. I don't believe on a strategy that the code itself defines the expectation of the system. In other words, that the code is correct because an early version of that code said so. And not only that, but there are other types of things that example-based testing, in my opinion, is not as good. For example, using tests as documentation itself. However, it's extremely handy when you are testing source code without tests that you don't know that you need to feel safe. And now I can refactor this all source code feeling confident. And by the way, if I want to delete this type of tests in the future, once I have other type of tests in place, I can even do it. It's just a safety net to start refactoring. And by the way, if you want to act today to prevent your refactorings from failing in the future, just make sure that you watch this video right here.